StoryMap.js is another creative storytelling tool that NightLab offers to make it possible to present a set of data or to tell a story about a list of events with more emphasis to the locations of their occurrence. It is basically a slider that incorporates interactive maps in different media types like video and images to create a pleasing visual experience. So the first step we need to do is to go to their official website and hit the Make a Story Map button and then give it a name. And now we have a pretty simple interface to input different kind of information. This first page is like a cover to the entire presentation, so here we should set a title in a descriptive text of the presentation's topic. Then we can hit preview to see how the result looks like. We can use HTML code in those fields, so here for example we can add a node by making a span with a special class which is vco-node, just to differentiate it from other text. Then we have the media section in which we can add a variety of media types to the presentation such as YouTube videos, audio samples from SoundCloud, pictures, tweets, etc. So now that we are done with the overview, let's create the first slide, in other words, the first point on the map. As you see, now we have another field which is where we have to set the location of each slide. Having said that, there are two ways to fill in this field. The first one is to use it as a search box, so we just need to type the name of the location and we are good to go. The second way is to type the coordinates of the location, however we need to type them correctly following a certain rule. So here we need to type LAT which is an acronym for latitude, a colon, then the value followed by a space, LON which stands for longitude, a colon, then the value. The rest is pretty much the same, we'll just see a couple of customizations that we can make to the slides. A couple of customizations we can make is to change the marker. By default markers display the icon of the media provider. Here for example it shows the YouTube logo because we included a video from YouTube to the slide. So to change it we need to go to marker options, then we can upload a custom marker or set a link to an image. In addition to that we can change the overlay of each slide. To do that go to background options and choose a color or set an image instead. A set of other generic customizations we can do is to set the height and width of the story map once ready to embed, the language, fonts, create as image or cartography, I will explain this in a second, and then the map type which basically refers to the look of the map. Now let's create another slide so you can understand what the treat as image or cartography option does. So as you can see here we have a dashed line between the locations. What the option does is to simply display or omit that line. So once set as treat as image, you notice that the dashed line disappears. On the other hand, if we set it back to cartography, it will be back.
Finally, to share the story map, go to Options, Sharing, Open Share Settings. Then we can use the link, which means that the presentation will be placed on a page that is hosted on the NightLab servers. Or we can use the embedding code to add it to a WordPress blog post, for example, or a manually created web page. The second method to create a story map is to manually code it or manually feed the data into the story map using JavaScript more precisely. To do that, we need to add the links to the core of the library in the CSS. Then we need to create an element which will serve as a container for the story map. That done, we need to create an instance of the story map class which constructor takes three arguments. The first argument is the ID we set to the element. The second one is an object that holds the data we want to show in a form of slides. And the third is an object that we can use to override some of the default options of the story map. So here, for example, we can remove the dashed lines by setting the value of the property map as image to true, the default being false. We can also set the look or the type of the map using the map type property. Now, the story object is supposed to be the data provider, however, it can also contain some of the options like the fonts and the zoom calculations between the slides. I think it is a bit confusing though, since they could have added those options to the third argument of the constructor. Then, we have the story map property which is an object in which we can also add another set of options. However, the options that we can set here are basically the same in the third argument, which means that we can omit that options object. Enough with options, now we have to add a slide property which takes a list of slides or objects that each represents a slide of the story map. So here, if we look at the documentation, we see that we have two types of slides. The first being what I called the cover earlier, which we can set by providing a type property which value must be overview. A cover doesn't take coordinates because it doesn't set a point on the map, thus we don't need the location property. That being said, we should add a text property which is an object that contains the headline and text properties, representing the title and the description fields respectively. Then we have the media property which is an object that holds the information regarding the media to display on the slide, like the link to the source of the media, credit and the caption.
That done, now let's create a couple slides. The process is pretty much the same, except that with slides we can omit the type property. However, we must set a location object which has the lat and long properties holding the values of the coordinates. And there we go. Last but not the least, if we try to shrink the window, you notice that the story map is not responsive. To solve that problem, we need to add a simple instruction for when the window resize event occurs. And there we go again, problem solved. And this is it for this tutorial, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.